So, and then, of course, we have something like, I know, huge business logic return. Echo class message. And that is, so we have one interface, one implementation, and no XML. XML is dead. There are, there are some crazy people in EGP3 who like XML, and we can do, we can write XML. But this was the same, the same, the same phenomenon as at the beginning of EGP1. I gave some trainings for Sun in Germany, and there were people who would say, I'm perfect with BI and Emacs. I can write the whole deployment of script with Emacs. But it did work the first day, and after they say, okay, it's not possible. Okay? You know XDocLab? XDocLab? There was the answer for the flow of EGP2, and EGP3 is something like, uh, EGP3 is something like EGP2 with conventions from XDocLab. So it's always a bad sign in case you have to generate the infrastructure. Then there it's redundant, it's not dry, don't repeat yourself. So, um, and now a little bit of soap. So, service, there is JSR 181, and what I can do, I can deploy it, undeploy and deploy. My next problem is I have Vista, you know Vista. So I need about one gigabyte, uh, one gigabyte for splash screen. So there is my JDD, it's already deployed, and my um, and I try to test my web service. Uh, oh, okay. yeah, but this is live hacking, so I guess. I did in, during the test, um, Krakow. I have, uh, I have, I guess, in one project, what's the name, this is the problem. I did it uh, several in the JDD talk. And um, what, you can, what I actually would like to show you that um, is nothing else than an EGB jar. So you, can, you have one session bean with the name, I don't know, user service, and um, pl.jdd, remote, finish. I will try just to deploy it. Perfect. Service. Crack out. With war and EGB jar. And what is it actually? It's nothing else than, than a file with an interface and implementation. No XML there. Absolutely not. It's just a metadata. So if you are providing web service, I'm just curious, I have to work, I do it all the time. With a, um, one method. Without the interface, hello. So. And look up the um, this one, this guy. This is my address. BSDL. So I have the visible, and I have the tester. So I have my method hello hello and I am able to invoke. This is the uh, request and this is the response. So, um, so what, what you can do now, you can easily inject this EGB, this one, to a server. So you can easily uh, come here, expose this method to a remote interface and say, I would like, like to have something like a servlet, uh, I don't know, controller. PL.jdd. And I can say I would like to inject uh, one EGB. Uh, this one. So this is the injection. And how the injection works is actually on an interface. So there's an interface, not, not uh, the implementation. And you can switch between the implementation either that way, here, or in XML. It's your choice. And convention over configuration does mean 
in case there's only one implementation of the interface, you do not have to specify it. And this is the huge difference to EGB2. In EGB2, you have, you have to specify everything. So it is much leaner, much, much easier. Um, if we, we'll have some time, I will, I will hack it, uh, the whole application for you. Um, so, questions so far. So what happens behind the scene, a jar was built, copied to auto deploy on application server, and notice the annotations fire up the application that it was. Yeah? The interesting story, no XML, it's just POJOS. So, and what happens in case you start with EGP3 and they are not good enough for you? In this particular case, you can switch to everything you want, to juice uh, Spring because everyone relies on interfaces and classes, so there is no risk. That's uh, actually an interesting story. Um, okay. No questions? So what you saw is AGP are just annotated classes. You, you can argue, okay, there is not very clean, not very pure, but who cares? You know, it is very efficient. This is, this is very important. And the productivity gain is huge. So what I see in trainings, for instance, we're able to build in one to two days the same use cases as with J2E with X doctored and and prepared, prepared uh, environment. So it's a really great, big difference between uh, those. Um, okay, EGB3 are nothing else than annotated POJOS. EGB31 is metadata derived from conventional reflection. So I just show you that. I'll show you that. Um, so the whole container of LastFish V3 takes about 300 kilobytes. So it is somehow lightweight. Um, so you could even, <laughs> even, even ex execute it on some of the cellular phones. It's a little bit crazy, but yeah, why not? Um, so perform performance uh, difference between the both. Of them is, um, for instance, I tested this with EGB3 and then with Pojo, and I know the difference was between 2,005, 500 uh, requests per second to 2,300. So it was actually nothing because 2,500 transactions on my notebook with Vista is uh, is perfect, you know, in, in, in either case. So um, so there was three three uh, three point three difference. And even better, the whole API, EGB API, is all you need to develop this stuff, about 40 kilobytes. So you need about 10 annotations, nothing else. All you need to test, nothing. You can use framework you like. I don't know, uh, Mokito, you heard about this, JUnit, everything you want to. So how to integrate RESTful services? So I will try this one. This comes not from me, but it was already there. So hopefully it would work. Test web service, yeah. This is just a built-in uh, application that comes with, uh, with NetBeans. And what I would like to show you is for, for the following. This is just a tester. So I click here on my customers and I say test. So what I see a list of customers. Uh, interesting story is the URL. HTTP localhost 8080 customdomain resources slash customers. And uh, the URL is interesting here in the sample, right? RESTful URL. What's interesting as well is start on max, zero to 10 something like this. What is it? It is actually a nice thing. It comes in, ja in Java 6. You can use it right now. The project is called Jersey. Jersey uh, is a Java.net project. And um, I'll show you the source code. There is a uh, customer's resource class. And what you see here is something like get. There is one annotation with the name get. And it comes from Java X, WS, RS, get. So the RS is RESTful. And this pack is great. You can read it. So what is JSR 3.11? Go to jcp.org, 3.11. You can download this pack, about 30 pages, well written. So forget books, read this pack. And um, what you see here, method get with two params, start and max. And it seems like the uh, RESTful wrapper, the JSR 3.11, is able you know, to address your classes. There is a, it reacts to GET request, and there is another method which reacts to POST request. So you can, and the whole class listens to customers, you know, and look at the URL, resources slash customers. This customers is just a convention. There, this, it is in web XML, so I have no time to show you, but this web XML, there is uh, one path, customers. Right? You got it? So if I click on, let's see, resources, customers, slash one, I would like to have the customer with the ID one. So it is. So it's just uh, well-written URLs mapped to objects, and you get back JSON or XML, doesn't matter. 
So if I click on this URL, I get probably, I get even, one customer in XML. And the interesting story here is, um, there is one another, there's another method here, pass customer ID, and this is something like template, so it extracts the string, converts it to integer ID, and, and uh, gives back customer's resource. What is customer's resource? 